at Dish TV. Uh, it's their first March financials with Videocon D2H. Uh, there have been issues of strong margin guidance. Uh, so let's try and understand what their outlook is on market share, subscriber edition and all of it. And who better than Anil Dua, the group CEO at Dish TV joining us on the show. Anil, hi, good morning. You've reported the first set of merged financials with the Videocon D2H. Walk us through some of the key highlights. Tell us what kind of a boost have you seen because of this merger? So we are anticipating a strong boost because of this merger to both Dish TV and Videocon D2H. Uh, it has been uh, a good planning period for us. We put together lot, lots of thoughts, lots of uh, possibilities, and some of them we've already started implementing. We have the combined teams now, very good talent pool, very excited about the future, uh, lots of possible synergies laid out on revenue side as well as cost side and uh, plans in place uh, to achieve them. Uh, so I think it's exciting future ahead. You've also mentioned that revenue would be further fortified because value added services, Anil. What kind of services are you looking at and what really is the strategy to help grow subscription revenues, for instance, going forward? Yes, so with the two platforms coming together, there is a lot of scope of strengthening of our channel partners, of strengthening of our reach, distribution. So conventional channels should give us uh, incremental uh, reach, incremental revenue. Also, uh, we're looking at uh, non-traditional channels to add a lot more. We're looking at value-added services which have already been uh, under good momentum for last couple of quarters. With the two platforms coming together, larger subscriber base, uh, we plan to get better costs also as well as better revenue from value added services. We are also looking at significant upgrades in terms of add-on packs, in terms of upgradation to high definition, uh, in addition to value added services. All these are going to add to revenue uh, plans of ours. Okay, um, that's very encouraging to hear. What is the sense on, uh, you know, how you're going to be keeping up with your strong margin guidance? This is making analysts very positive. Uh, what is the margin guidance and, you know, how do you hope to uh, leverage, uh, you know, costs in, in, in order to ensure that those margin targets are maintained? Right, so if you see uh, our uh, EBITDA margin uh, in 17-18 has been 31.5%. We've given a guidance of about 34 to 35% uh, this year in FY19. This is on back of uh, some of the revenue synergies that I spoke about and also on back of lots of cost synergies which are possible on content side with joint procurement uh, for both the platforms, uh, on financing cost side uh, with the interest. Uh, cost of our debt coming down on the capex side with joint procurement of our set top boxes, antennas and everything. Also lots of synergies on IT back end, on call center. So all this put together we are forecasting a synergy of around 510 crore in FY19 uh, and I think we have uh, good solid plans to achieve those. Market is currently estimated to have uh, over 60 million subscribers, which is six crore subscribers, uh, uh, put it simply in, um, in Indian terms, and is growing at around 10% annually. How much growth do you anticipate? Um, how do you see the industry growth shaping up? And what percentage of the industry growth are you hoping to garner in terms of your market share? Yes, uh, we uh, see going forward uh, lots of uh, non-TV households coming into the fold. We see lots of digitalization happening. DAS 3 uh, is still 10 to 15 percent uh, pending and DAS 4, almost 50 percent opportunity is still there. Uh, so uh, we see uh, lots of these households coming into DTH fold. Uh, our share, uh, we are looking at uh, almost more than 40 percent share of this acquisition. Uh, we are today 37% of the active base, so we plan to accelerate uh, from where we are. 
Okay. As we understand, um, you know, the merger has now created the largest DTH company in India. And, and you know, um, that includes Dish TV, D2H, as well as Zing, which are well-marketed brands. What is the strategy going forward for the year ahead? How much is it that you're looking to, you know, spend by way of ads and uh, the promotional costs? Right, so strategy going forward, um, I will say uh, rests on a few pillars which should be differentiated from the past because we have this huge opportunity of the merger. So I think first and foremost, uh, my uh, real target is to really strengthen the brands that we have. We have the advantage of a multi-brand portfolio with Dish, D2H and Zinc. We plan to position these brands sharply and strengthen them. The second leg of our strategy will really be to be the thought leaders, to innovate, to launch new products. Towards that end, we plan to launch our OTT service, our hybrid box in near future. And thirdly, uh, our strategy will really rest on ensuring that our strength uh, of uh, being commercially very savvy and now the opportunity of merger, we realize the vision of the merger, we realize the last drop of the synergy that we planned in terms of this 510 crore in this year and 760 crore in the next year, uh, our strategy will really be to focus on these three areas in a big way. Expect to outgrow the industry growth rate back by launch of new set-top boxes uh, that would be full HD compliant. Uh, how much will this boost your ARPUs by, uh, your average revenue per unit, uh, or per user rather, um, if you have run those numbers? Yeah, I can tell you that our ARPU for last quarter is 201. Uh, the ARPUs have been uh, flat for last uh, couple of years, but we plan to uh, drive them forward going forward. Uh, our idea will be to increase our revenue by focusing on quality uh, of our acquisition, uh, by strengthening our net ads, by increasing our active base, by improving our services like high definition, for the combined platform is 15% of our total base. We plan to take that up further uh, specifically. And also, as we have already discussed in terms of add-on packs and value-added services. So uh, while there continues to be downward pressure uh, in terms of industry pricing, uh, I think we've taken a, a lead by uh, raising our prices uh, this year already. We've uh, taken up our pack prices earlier this year in April in this fiscal and we've also taken up very recently our box prices by 200 rupees. Uh, there has been good acceptance of these in the market. Uh, so all these measures I feel will definitely strengthen our P&L. Just a final question then Anil and you know that really is the kind of stiff competition that we are seeing in the D2H space from not just new entrants such as Reliance Geo but also independent streaming companies like Netflix, Hotstar, Amazon Prime which are really changing the way we view TV. Uh, what are your plans to tackle stiff competition? Yes, it's a small segment right now, but it's a growing trend. So we are completely cognizant of it. We have our plans in place. We are working on that. And as I said that, you know, before Diwali, we plan to come out with uh, our own Big Bang launch of our OTT service, also our hybrid boxes around that time, uh, and participate in that space as we go forward, as that opportunity grows bigger. And we do all that while focusing on our core, uh, which is our uh, live TV channel, uh, uh, where we are very strong with, as I said, almost 40% share. So we continue to strengthen that offering because that will remain uh, the bigger opportunity in for many years to come. But we also build this new emerging opportunity and be there to participate in that as it takes off. The very best uh, uh, to make the most of that opportunity as it unfolds. Mr. Dua, thanks very much for talking to us uh, and uh, sharing with us quite candidly your business plans. Thank you.